Hi, I'm Scott Hinkstrom. I'm an Extension Wildlife Specialist with the University of Nebraska. And I'm here today to talk a little bit about surveys. Now, if you choose to control black-tailed prairie dogs to reduce competition between livestock and prairie dogs, and perhaps to uh, protect human health and safety. And if you choose to use anticoagulant baits for this control of prairie dogs, you must by label conduct follow-up surveys to remove dead or dying prairie dogs above ground and any bait that might be spilled or present above ground. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the proper techniques that you can use to conduct these surveys how to dispose of prairie dogs that you find above ground and the baits that you might find above ground, and how to report any incidents such as these. Now this is going to be a fairly short video, and so I can't cover all the information that's uh, necessary, but you can access all of this information by looking at the product labels, by looking at the product websites, and also taking a look at the uh, website by the Environmental Protection Agency and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Two anticoagulants are registered for use on black-tailed prairie dogs in Nebraska. Their brand names are Rosol and Kaput. And Rosol is a chlorofascinone treated bait and Kaput is a dipfascinone treated bait and both of these are restricted use pesticides. Today I'm joined by Wayne Holman who is a wildlife specialist with the U.S. Department of Agriculture, Wildlife Services. And Wayne's going to demonstrate uh, the various ap bait application procedures, but also he's going to demonstrate the uh, proper techniques for conducting surveys. Both of these anticoagulant baits are applied directly into the burrow, and prairie dogs usually begin to die uh, four to five days after the application. Now these toxicants accumulate in the liver and other tissues of the de dead and dying prairie dogs, and if a prairie dog happens to die above ground, it may be available for predators and scavengers, such as golden eagles, red-tailed hawks, coyotes, black-footed ferrets, you know, just to name a few. And if one of these other non-target species were to contact, come into contact and consume uh, enough prairie dogs that are intoxicated, it could lead to what we call secondary poisoning. In addition, some of the bait itself may be kicked out of the burrows and therefore it may be available for direct consumption by animals such as cattle, rabbits, uh, and grain feeding birds. And this could potentially lead to primary poisoning. So by label, you must remove these hazards from prairie dog towns after application. You typically start the surveys four to five days after application of the anticoagulant bait. And you repeat these surveys every one to two days for two weeks or as long as you see dead or dying prairie dogs above ground. Standard transects are used to cover the treated areas effectively. And these transects are laid out uh, across the area that's been, been, been treated. And the transects are a maximum of 200 feet apart. If you happen to have denser vegetation, you need to uh, make those transects closer together so that you can effectively see prairie dogs on either side of the transect. There's a little technique, technique you can use, and that is just a, a glove or something that looks like a prairie dog, cast off to the side, and then walk away from that glove to determine your effective sighting distance. Then you can use that to determine your width between transects. Mark the ends of your transects with flagging or foam, and it's a really good idea to use a GPS unit if you happen to be using a mechanical device such as an ATV. Once you've laid out your transects, you run them every afternoon uh, to evening on foot or in a vehicle, and you need to conduct these prairie dogs at less than four miles per hour, looking left as you go down the transect. As you turn around the end of the transect, marked by the flags, you then again proceed and look left. So you're seeing both sides of the transect looking for prey dogs that may be dead or dying above ground. Collect any dead or dying prey dogs that are found above ground and collect any bait that you might see kicked up and present above ground. Proper protective equipment for this process is the use of waterproof gloves, long sleeves, 
long pants, socks, and shoes. Dispose of black-tailed prairie dogs by burial, 18 inches deep, in an inactive burrow or hole. Fill that hole with soil and pack the soil tight. If the ground happens to be frozen, you can dispose of uh, dead prairie dogs by incineration or other methods that are recommended by your public health department. Dispose of any bait that's found above ground in the same way that you applied the bait. Place it in an active burrow at least six inches down below ground. The presence of any dead or dying prairie dogs by label must be reported to the National Pesticide Information Center and the number is here as you see on the screen 1-800-858-7378. Any ill or sick federally endangered species such as black-footed ferrets that are found must be reported by label to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. That number is 1-303 Two three six seven five four zero. Any black-footed ferrets that are found must by label be reported to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service Black-Footed Ferret Coordinator. That number is 1-970-897-2730-224. If you use anticoagulant baits to control black-tailed prairie dogs on your land, by federal law, and by the product label, you must conduct follow-up surveys to remove any hazards to non-target wildlife. Transects can be laid out to search areas effectively. Disposal is simply by deep burial, and you must report all incidents. If you have any further questions, check with the product label, the product website, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, or the Environmental Protection Agency. Thank you and good luck.